Hey, Cedric here. Gonna do something a little different. I don't usually do tutorials and stuff. I'm hoping this will show. I'm gonna get my hands up here. Um, had a buddy. He's doing doing paracord bracelets, and, and now I'm not sure if I really understood what he's having trouble with, but from my understanding. A second here. From my understanding, his problem is figuring out what to do with the ends. Not really sure. All right, paracord bracelets, and he's making this one out of a, a survival cord that he bought off of me. All right, so it'll be a little bit different. Not much, but a little different. Now, whether you are making your paracord bracelet with paracord or twisted or braided rope cord um, you're gonna need some basic things first of course the cord I'm gonna make this out of some cordage that I made this is uh, made with black and toxic green Dyneema line yeah 90 pound toxic green 100 pound black so this is super strong stuff. You're going to need a side release buckle or your shackle depending on. But let's just say we're going to make our standard. All right. Now you can buy these on eBay, Amazon, very inexpensively, you know. Um, again, you're going to need your cord, edge, and give me just a second. Where was I? Yes, the basic things you're going to need. Now, depending upon depending upon what kind of cordage you're using or cord, you're going to need something to finish with. Okay, so with with nylons and other meltable materials, a lighter will often do your trick. Um, and if that doesn't work, if you're working with um, you know, uh, a Kevlar or non-melting nylon, some of that mil-spec nylon uh, thread, then you're going to want some kind of a glue, all right? This is just to secure it and a nice finish, all right? We'll get to that, though. I'll, uh, I'll do one with the lighter and, and, and one with the, uh, the glue. So, next, we need to measure out how much. A sort of a, a rule of thumb is that for every inch on a survival bracelet, you'll want one foot of cord, okay? And this tutorial is going to show you how to do it with just a single piece, okay? And I'll probably fast forward through some of this stuff. So it looks to me like i got about six feet here. I'm just going to make a nice little, little, uh, a little six incher there. So I want to go ahead and get this uh, get this all done up here. So I'm gonna grab the electric tape that I should have had already on hand. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do up one side here with tape and this is gonna be the, the cordage that I'm not using. Uh, you can also use this uh, anything that's going to help you uh, what's the word I'm looking for get it through the the small little little uh, slot on these, these buckles because these side release buckles they can be a pain in the butt trying to get your cord through this stuff's pretty tough I'm actually going to use a use a knife because this Dyneema is tough stuff you'd be like scissoring through trying to get through all right so now we have our piece measured and cut to some degree now here's a cool little trick that helps me with this whole getting it through that little little slot all right look even with paracord let me grab another piece of paracord here I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm talking about you're trying to trying to get your paracord through and it's like 
it's binding up on you and everything you're just like what do I do here's what you do dun, 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 dun. now we're gonna go ahead and just pinch it flat now see what I'm talking about now it's it's more like threading a needle now you can pass that through there you see boom makes makes it a lot easier on you you just kind of squeeze it flat heat it up and, and if that hurts your fingers then you can do it like so uh, get yourself something flat to, to work against alright and we'll do this we'll get that softened up and then press it with your lighter press it with your lighter and again got it nice and flat alright no biggie so now we want to make this bracelet with a single length, okay? Single length of cord. So, firstly, we want to pass these through one of these slots, all right? This one, I, I'm not using the, the tape. I actually melted this one and flattened it. And the Dyneema is not very keen and friendly when it, when it comes to all that. It's kind of a jerk but it's tough. So I'm going to squeeze down on the electric tape to flatten that out and we're going to come through and I do not make bracelets enough that I remember do I want to come from the bottom? Does it look better if I come in from the bottom or from the top? But we'll see right now and I'll go back and change it if need be. Alright? So and this is maybe slightly larger than your, your standard paracord so it's going to be you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of a difference if you're just used to working with paracord yeah I should probably just go ahead and, and edit all that monkey business out I ain't nobody care about that but then you know, maybe let you know that, that it's not just for something that's super easy for everyone or something like that, you know, you ain't alone. So now I want to pull this all through. Try and keep them even, you know. Pull it on through. You might get some of that twistiness there. Just go ahead and work it out. And again, we're using a non-standard cord, larger than your normal paracord, so that may be a little bit more of a hassle than paracord. But, on the flip side, you can take this in apart into to eight separate pieces that are 100 pound and, and 90 pound rated. Dyneema. Super tough stuff. Now we want to tighten this up. You see how I loop this back through? So we got this looped through itself. That's one side of our bracelet, okay? Looking good, looking good. Nice and clean, okay? Can you see that? I hope so. You see how I brought these? We pushed these through and pulled that loop all the way up and then just put these down through that loop and pull them, pull them taut. And you want to keep them flattened out, okay? Got it nice and taut. Now we're going to want to come back around. All right, come back around. I want to keep this visible. 
and these need to be kept kind of straight damn I got uneven you see that that blows I'm gonna try to work work some of this slack back around this will be like fast forwarded so you won't even be hearing me talking Boom. I'm gonna try to get these back evened out better so now we're keeping this so that they don't cross each other okay now we're gonna come back around and we're going to go in through the top I believe okay or the bottom however you want this is your thing alright this is your thing now we want to pull this until it is to the approximate length that we want all right for our bracelet and you can measure it like so so we're going to attempt to make a, a six incher and most of the time it is it's going to end up being a little bit shorter because some of your uh, diameter is lost when uh, within the weave okay so don't sweat that don't feel weird make it a little bit larger if you have to okay so now you can see that this this is going to self correct I'm not going to sweat that because this is a twisted rope and as I pulled it through it's wanting to turn against the, the twist. That's no big deal. Alright, so now we want to operate on the outside of the bracelet. So I'm going to go ahead and snap this back together. Okay, snap this back together. Boy, six inches small, huh? Yeah. See if I can get it a little bigger. One to actually be wearable for a human. So now we've got it like this, okay? We're going to pull one of these to either side. The same one, you know? Left one goes to the left, right one goes to the right. Can you see that, okay? Now, I always start with the left one. And I go, it goes over. You see this? And then I'll hold it. So I've got that nice loop. And I'll just leave it kind of dangle there. Can you see this okay? You would tell me if you couldn't, right? Now this is going to go behind. You see what I'm doing here? Go behind and through. And there's there's a lot of tutorials out there where the guys have better cameras. My main, main focus here is going to be how to end it. But I figured, heck, you know, I can go ahead and, and do the rest of this too. Now, Here's a little trick for remembering where you are in the grand scheme of things. Whichever one that you started with, it's going to be going across. You can follow that tracery so you know which one you want to do next. It's going to be that same one. You're going to pass that same one back and forth. That's always going to be the one that goes first. Okay? So we are going to mimic our movement from before. Then this one comes over top and then in through okay and again there are there's a pile of uh, of tutorials out there and I'm not exactly your your best uh, paracord tutorial dude there's a lot of guys with better cameras better setups and better better knowledge when it comes to making the the bracelets you know they're just better so 
again we want to know which one goes next we follow that tracer the one that's going over that's going to be next so we continue doing the same thing back and forth all right back and forth back and forth Q fast forward fast forward will stop for a moment now you'll want to remain cognizant of your center uh, chords okay because they're going to try to uh, pop through sometimes when, when you pull so as you go just intermittently I would recommend just giving it a little tug and making sure that they're not going to pop up like little blisters fast forward engage See that? That's what I mean. It'll look butt ugly if you leave them little blisters like poking up. But you can always back up. You can always pop some stitches out and back up. You also want to make sure you keep those stitches even, okay? Um, try to put the same amount of force into each one so that you get a you know a, the same size as you go along same width all that and again I do not make paracord bracelets that often so I'm really uh, really not your guru on this but I figured why not put this up for a buddy because I don't have to sort through all the all the tutorials out there maybe this will help now one of the things we want to remember the the idea behind the paracord bracelet is to have a a fashionable yet utilitarian um, uh, assembly of emergency cordage right there at your fingertips so we want this to be something that can be taken apart and, and utilized Here we go. Now, we're up to that last, okay? You see where we're at? Now, myself, I like, as I said, you know, to, to do a very solid job finishing this. So, what we're going to do is finish up this last one. Pull her in, alright? Pull her in. Nice and tight. Now, paracord is much easier to do alright uh, this like I said it doesn't melt very well it's not friendly with paracord here let me just show you real quick how easy paracord is it's, it's just nonsensical it's so easy we'll just throw a couple of stitches on here real fast because you're probably utilizing paracord utilizing I gotta say that, just say using. Using paracord, mister. So check it out. Pull this tight. We're just, you know, we're doing the same stitch. Now for paracord, it's super duper easy. Like I said, pull that last one tight. Now, if you use a knife, whatever, be safe. Clip it fairly close. You want to leave yourself a little more than a sixteenth of an inch, you see? hope that shows up. We're going to snip that. I want to show you how awesomely easy paracord is. We've got our lighter. Now we're going to hit this, being careful not to hit the rest of our bracelet because it'll make it shiny and it's kind of ugly. But we want to heat that nice and deep. Now push that back over. Now you've effectively created a plug that's not going to pull through on its own. But if this needs to be taken apart, then a person can go ahead and get that apart. All right. So there you go. That's that's how I do it anyway. And they can get it apart. See? They just break that melty away. 
and then just kind of work that plug back through. But it's not going to come through on its own. Now, this is a different animal. This, if we're going to do it with super glue, then we're going to want to have a, a smaller, uh, less than 1 16th. We want to snip it just as close as we can without uh, ganking our, our weave. You don't want to snip the piece it's right next to. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and snip that. And we want to finish that cord so that when someone takes it apart, that twisted cord doesn't do this. Okay? You see all the strands I use? Now you can use this by itself, and that'll be uh, 380 pound right there. Just on its own. Boom. Or take them apart. Now, your one way is to melt them. Alright? just like we just did with the paracord but we want to we want to engage it with the cordage around it because we need that to not pull through okay so we need that to become a plug and we want to heat <coughs> the cord that's right next to it so that it, it sort of gets like a minimal bond a heat bond alright so it's not going to pull back through now here's your other way it's warm in here. I had to turn the ceiling fan off so I could use the lighter. Now you see, you see what a fine finish that is. It's not ugly. Um, very, very clean. You don't have any extra melted ends. We did this with a single piece. Okay, super simple, super easy. Now, if we're going to use glue, because we're working with a Kevlar or something like that, then here's how we want to finish it, okay? We want to go ahead and my personal per, personal recommendation is to juice it up before. Open the weave up, okay? Boop, boop, boop. Put your super glue in there. Close the weave back up and snip it and immediately clean your scissors. Otherwise, you won't get your scissors open ever again. Um, that's my personal personal favorite way. Now, we're just going to do it real simple. We're going to snip it just as close as we can, okay? See? We snip that sucker. Now, we're going to go ahead and use our super glue. Now, what we want to do is put it just that, that littlest drop right in the center of that, okay? because we want this to be a usable rope that's not going to fall apart when our client has to use this in an emergency situation. They want to be able to have this as one long piece of cord. So we've got that in there, okay? And you can use your finger, just make sure you don't touch anything after. Now I want to press that down and I want to create the same kind of plug that I created by melting it, okay? So, there's what I've done. You give it time to cure like that. Boom. Now we've got a, a very simple, very easy survival bracelet, okay? And this probably ain't going to fit me. Oh, look at that. Just, just, just. Very easy to make easier to make than it is to put on your own wrist damn I'm gonna die in the wilderness because I can't even get my bracelet on give me a second here it's a good thing I got some emergency cordage in my pocket uh, alright so it don't fit my wrist but you get the picture okay it's a very very simple very easy way to make your own paracord bracelet. Alright, your own survival bracelet. So I'd encourage you to do this. I mean, why not? The world's yours, okay? So, that's it. That's how I finish the ends, okay? Uh, I hope 
that that was helpful. Um, showed it on here as well. This is what it'll look like when it's taken apart. You see how we, we turned it into a nice flat plug that it'll actually take a bit of work to get that out. It's not just going to come loose on its own. Um, and you all already know how awesome you know just the regular paracord is. This has the, the strings in the middle that, that you can use and each of these are rated 50 pounds. Um, and when you've got this this kind of cordage, when you've got a twisted cord, uh, you can take it apart and you see that those are hanging together. You can go ahead and melt this end and you'll end up, uh, you can use this as a cord on its own or you can take it apart into its component parts four separate strands this is the beauty of your survival bracelet see that's it I'm gonna fast forward some of that stuff so y'all ain't bored to bored to tears and I appreciate y'all coming by hanging out with me one love right I appreciate y'all coming by and hanging out with me alright you be good to yourselves hold your heads up high you live free and always 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 punch hard okay and I dig you. You be good to yourself because you're worth it. I'll catch you later. Bye.